As a result of the UNN's ship construction philosophy being quantity over quality, over the past few decades the advancement of ship technology had almost fallen into a state of complete stagnancy. However, after their Cold War had ended and the solar system was plunged into the UN-MCR war, they began to pick up their pace once again. By the time the Free Navy had become a significant threat, the brand new Nathan Hale class battleship was put into active duty. The design of the Nathan Hale class stands far apart from its own UN ancestors, abandoning the large bulky shapes that we are familiar with and going with a much sleeker and angular look similar to that of the Doniger class battleship of the MCRN. No official length is given in the show, however in this shot we can estimate its length to be somewhere between 270 to 310 meters as we know the skiffs used by the UN are approximately 30 meters in length. Additionally, there is this wonderful Zenobia size extrapolation done by Avomancer, which was done by scaling the ship in accordance with either the Truman class dreadnoughts, railguns, or PDCs. Now the configuration A that ended up being 454 meters is a little too long for my liking. However, the 290 meters of configuration B is around the average of what my calculations were, so I will go with that. This puts the Nathan Hale somewhere between the Leonidas class and Truman class in length. Four large Epstein drives are situated at the back of the vessel to break its enormous mass as it burns at 1G and faster. The armament of the Nathan Hale class is very moderate. From all of the shots we have seen of the ship, we can tell that there are at least 18 point defense cannons, however this number could easily be as high as 36. There are six large torpedo tubes at the front of the ship, which can fire torpedoes with a wide variety of warheads, and with the size of these tubes, we can assume that they can fire planet buster torpedoes as well. At the front, there are two mounted medium-sized railguns that can fire large tungsten slugs at immensely fast speeds. The 12 hull plates at the bow of the ship class is its most interesting feature, as it's composed of the newly developed carbon silicate lace plating armor which was the result of protomolecule research. Following up, this is the CIC of one of the Nathan Hale class ships. The interior is very reminiscent of a submarine, and the ship's critical operations are split into four stations. Countermeasures, communications, weapon systems, and navigation, with two panels situated at the center of the room. I'd like to mention that all the stations have touch screens as well as physical buttons. As there are moments when both are necessary, this is something I like to see. This also leads me to believe that older ships like the Truman and Leonidas class aren't as outdated as we were thought to believe as physical buttons are clearly a part of the UNN's ship philosophy. On this panel, we can see a display of the 12 armor plates at the bow of the ship, as well as their active status. The center displays are also equipped with holographic emitters and are generally used by the captain or the highest ranking personnel on board. In some scenes we can see other rooms as well. This right here is Vasarala's personal quarters, which has customizable lighting as well as holographic emitters built in. We also see this briefing room with a large display and an interactable hologram that can display three-dimensional tactical data. Finally, the Nathan Hale class also has the ability to have skiffs stocked inside as well. So far, the only compatible class of skiff we know of is the L-type dropships that are commonly employed by the UN. These can be used to transport important personnel and also be used as a means of troop deployment of UN Marines. Next, we'll be moving on to the history of this ship class. Our first encounter with a ship of this class was in Season 6, Episode 1, the UNN Zenobia, also known as UN-1. We see it orbiting Earth as it prepares for the docking of a dropship with Madam Secretary General Christian of Asrala. On board the Zenobia was also former gunnery sergeant Bobby Draper as well as reporter Monica Stewart. Next in the following episode, we see the same ship in this glorious shot as it's burning away from the sun. Finally, in episode 3, while we don't get a clear shot of it, the Zenobia was also a part of the joint UNN and MCRN fleet during its attempt to seize control of Ceres Station. This attempt was successful and the Zenobia remained docked at Ceres Station for the following three episodes. When it comes to the Expanse, I had always preferred the MCRN ships over the UNN because of their advanced technology and overall sleekness. However, the Nathan Hale class makes it clear to me that the UNN are just as capable when it comes to battleships and I hope to see more of this ship class in this show finale. Thank you for watching my ship breakdown on the Nathan Hale class battleship. If you would like to see more videos on The Expanse or other science fiction franchises, please click the subscribe button so you never miss a new upload.